Yeah. I love all bitches. Brown square over bitches. Rich poor slave bitches. Smart dumb crazy bitches. Rude horny dirty bitches. Hey guys, what's going on? So guys, I figured today is the day I will start to uh, give you guys a little story of my trip to Jags HQ. Um, I do apologize once again. I should have got these videos out kind of earlier. Um, I, you know, the first day I got back, I you know took a little bit of a break basically from everything, and I just kind of tried to sleep for the whole time. Well, I guess the second day I got back because the first day I got back, there were still uh, the mini games going on with the still in creation bonus. Uh, so I tried to do as much of that as I could, and I got like a few like two thousand points, I believe it was. Uh, which is equivalent to obviously like 1,000 points. Um, so, you know, that's what I tried to do, and then I went to sleep after it was over. And in the background, um, I just felt like putting some type of an older clip in, in the background where you guys would see me uh, technically being on Legacy Mode, or as you guys all like to call it, uh, pre-EOC. Yes, the days with the dragon claws and the chaotic rapiers and none of the dragors and things like that. Lovely days. I would say that was probably around the best time where I enjoyed RS the most was when there was uh, just basically pre-EOC Slayer, you know, you get like a million Slayer experience a day, that'd be pretty freaking boss. You'd also get like a million range experience from doing that with the cannon. And sometimes you'd mage things like ice strikes if you would like to. Um, and things like that. Back when it wasn't too easy, but it wasn't too hard. But yeah, whatever year that was, I guess that was probably my favorite time on RuneScape. Uh, not, not to say I'm not enjoying it now, but that was definitely my favorite time. So moving on to the actual trip, uh, I was dropped off at the airport by my mom, my, not my mom, uh, my grandma and my grandpa because my mom was working that day. Um, so they dropped me off, they gave me like $100 for some reason just because I might have needed some extra stuff. Um, I refused it, but they gave me it, and that's probably going too much into detail. So um, I was waiting for uh, Archie at the airport, basically. I went and sat down and got some stuff to eat, like a, like a muffin. Oh, by the way, I am supposed to be on my cut right now. But then, you know, when you go on a trip, the last thing you want to do is try dieting. Um, so I just completely gave up on that. I didn't go crazy, obviously, but um, I didn't obviously count my macros. I didn't really... Uh, you know, make sure I was eating healthy. I mean, it's not really possible when you're traveling. Now, this was my first time going to an airport by myself. I've, I've obviously been to an airport a few times when I was younger. Uh, and I was going back and forth to Cyprus and Turkey, basically, uh, which for me would be like three planes. I would take a plane from Toronto to freaking New York, which sounds retarded, uh, which is like an hour plane ride, like an hour and a half. And then I'd go from um, New York to Turkey and then Turkey to Cyprus because there's no direct flight to Cyprus, obviously, because it's so small. It's going to probably have like a, one more place before you can actually go there. That's kind of why I was a little bit confused. I was like, crap, dude, I'm going to be on an airport. My, like, I'm going to be at the airport myself. I'm going to probably miss my plane and fuck up somehow. So I was a little bit scared. I was like, shit. Because back in my day, man, it was just grab my mom's hand and let her guide me the way, man. But yeah, I fully understand how the airport now works. You get dropped off at like a different terminal. That's how it kind of works. And uh, one thing I was kind of new to was uh, the last time I went on an airplane, actually, um, we didn't have a freaking TV or like a little thing behind every single seat where you could watch movies. I didn't even know that. Back then, it was just like this big computer at the at the side of every single uh, like section on the air or then the air the airport the um the airplane and you'd have to like watch the little small like 15 inch tv and it would be like freaking 20 meters away from you that's how it was whenever i last took an airplane now every single freaking seat has like a little mini tv at the back of it where you can watch movies and they were actually new movies as well i watched um uh, what were they called? I watched The Wolf of Wall Street, which I've already watched many times, obviously, even in the theaters. And I watched Pain and Gain, which I never fully watched the movie, actually, but pretty crazy movie. And I can't believe it's actually based on a true story. That's even more fucked up, but I definitely recommend watching that movie. Um, but yeah, I watched both of those uh, twice, actually. I watched them on the way to UK and on the way back to Toronto. But yeah, they have a few new movies that are actually in the theaters. They're relatively new. Um, and they have, like, a few older ones. They had a sports one as well. I watched... Um, I think it was like some NBA like 1990 type of shit where it was like Michael Jordan and all that crap in there. So that's kind of, that wasn't actually born on the airplane, uh, but it, it was really boring. Dude. Oh my God, I hate flying, man. It's so boring. And turbulence. I cannot handle turbulence. Man. Every single time I feel the airplane shake, I'm like, dude, this freaking 50,000 ton thing is moving. Like, I'm so scared. Anyways, not too much detail. I want to keep this kind of short, but it's going to be impossible. I can already tell you guys. So just, you know, close down the screen and just listen. You guys will be able to uh, do your skilling while you listen to this video. I guess that's definitely what type of video this will be. Um, I might have been reached 15 plus minutes. I don't really know yet. 
going to try to stop going into so much detail, though, like the freaking airplane, right? What the hell am I doing? And no, unfortunately, me and Archie were not uh, sitting next to each other on the airport, on the airplane. Uh, I keep calling it freaking airport. Uh, he was, like, I was more at the front. He was kind of more at the back, which apparently the more at the front of the airplane is where the babies are. I'm not too sure. There's only about one baby whenever I was there. And believe it or not, it was not crying. I don't, I don't think. I had my earbuds in the entire time, but I don't think it was crying. It was a freaking awesome baby. And near the end of the trip, I ended up talking to the person that also sat beside me. That's going into too much detail again. Pretty cool lady. Um, I think she was traveling for business reasons or something like that. Um, anyway, so we land in the UK. The first thing that happens, obviously, there's someone at the airport ready to pick me and Archie up. He was holding like a little Jagex symbol. Or apparently, if you guys don't live in the UK, obviously, um, apparently Jagex is actually quite big in the UK. I don't really know, but like if you have, like if you work at Jagex, you're considered like. One of the cool kids or some shit. It's a, I guess it's like a higher up company or some shit. And it's really respected or something like that. I don't really know. But yeah, I found that to be kind of interesting. Because I don't really know like, you know, it's like a big company in the UK. I thought it was just a, like a regular company and a little craziness. But it's actually quite well known, it looks like, in the in, uh, UK at least. So about a two hour uh, drive all the way back to our uh, hotels and whatnot. Uh, which we actually, I think we first actually went to um, JAX HQ. We didn't go directly to our hotels or actually they're called apartments uh well obviously they're called apartments but i thought we were going to hotels but it was actually a nice apartment uh which apparently was cheaper than a hotel so that's kind of nice to know um you guys will see the real footage of the actual apartment once i am able to put it on my computer uh, i'm going to do my best to upload that tomorrow for you guys um because you know if it's like a week later it's kind of odd because it's like well this happened since a long time ago now but um, you know, i'm doing my best to get it on the computer i believe i talked to james as well this morning and he says that uh Hopefully soon he can upload his footage as well because uh, his computer right now is not with him or some shit. I guess he sent it off to get fixed or something like that. But um, yeah, I have talked to James a little bit as well since he gotten back. Uh, so once he gets his computer, you know, he should be able to upload the video for you guys as well. So anyways, we arrive at Jax HQ. Uh, me and Archie, I believe, were the first ones to be there. I believe like an hour or two later, Caveman Films uh, was also there, which is a Minecrafter, I believe. I, but I believe he started off with RuneScape as well. I think he has like 1.2 million subscribers or something. I don't really know who he was until like later on. I was like, wait, who is this guy? Because yeah, I never actually saw his videos or anything. And I thought he played RuneScape. He was like one of those lower YouTubers that are slowly working their way up. Um, so, you know, I, I didn't really know exactly who he was. But that's, I guess, kind of cool and interesting. So, yeah, me and Archie had some breakfast, I believe. Should I call him Chris or Archie? I don't really know. I think I called, I think I called him Archie more than I called him Chris. I don't really know why. But yeah, we had breakfast, met a few of the J-Mods. The first J-Mod we mostly met was Mod Slayer, uh, which if you guys want to know, her name is Jules, if you guys would like to know that. Um, and she actually remembers a video I made about her whenever I was doing summoning. And I noticed that she was like into my clan and stuff like that um, in True Max. And she was running back and forth through Birthrock, training her summoning. I don't know if you guys remember that video, but you know, I, I kind of said in my video, I'm like, why is this J-Mod doing this? Do they not understand that, like, the kayak method's probably better for them. Uh, and she actually told me the full story about why she was doing that. Um, so I was kind of like, oh crap, I hope she didn't hear me talk shit or anything. Because I, I wasn't talking shit. I was being as nice as I possibly could be. But yeah, I was like, oh crap, I hope she's not mad about that. I believe uh, we also met Mod Paul, which, I mean, I, I believe Chris has already met all these people anyways. So for me, it was the first time meeting them. I'm not going to lie to you guys, the first day, obviously, I was a little bit nervous. Not too nervous, because... I mean, most of these people, I guess, know who I am from just my videos. So I, I, it's not like it's just a brand new person meeting brand new people. Um, so I guess they kind of knew a little bit about me, but I had no idea about them, obviously. I didn't even know, like, which J-Mods work and what, you know, like, so I was like, wait, who are you? Who are you? Oh, one thing I should probably talk about as well was, uh, and I'm not going to lie, I always see a lot of the times in my videos, if I don't like an update, I speak a lot of shit about the update. Believe it or not, from what I've heard, uh, Jenks does not mind uh, criticism. I mean, from what I've noticed, especially when we were there, they said, hey, if you guys don't like something, be, you know, be crucial about it. Uh, tell us your exact opinion on it. And, you know, we're not going to get offended, whichever, whatever you guys say, you know. Um, so I guess, you know, saying like, I hate this update sometimes or things like that. Um, isn't exactly a horrible thing. I mean, it gives them feedback, sort of, and if people are like, yeah, I hate this too, maybe they sometimes work around that and say, hey, we need to update this then. But, uh, yeah, it's kind of like, hmm, a lot of time I say a lot of crappy things about some of their updates, especially the Squeal of Fortune ones. Um, and then I was like, hmm, this might be kind of awkward. What if, like, this J-Mod worked on that update? And I'm, like, bashing their idea on video, and then it's like, hey, we're shaking hands now. But yeah, I'm sure most of you guys were also all wondering about that. Like, hmm, I've never seen a comment on my videos. Like, isn't it going to be awkward for you? I kind of thought so at first, but believe it or not, it wasn't awkward at all. 
Fucking 10 minutes. I'm only at the breakfast part on the first freaking day. This is horrible. All right, that's going to be like a 30-minute video. I can already tell you guys. So hopefully, yeah, let's just see who's still watching. I asked in the video yesterday when I told you guys to comment Blackberry. I'm going to tell you guys to comment now Raspberry. There we go. Comment Raspberry if you're still here. I'm going to continue doing this throughout the video, so get ready. So I'm going to try to skim through some of the things that happen now just to make it a little bit quicker. Uh, you know, we, we ate breakfast. Uh, Jules basically brought me and this is when Caveman Film uh, also came down. In the morning that we actually got to sit down for a little bit, I talked to Mon Matt K a little bit about old school and about RS3, I guess, as well. I didn't really know if he wanted to talk about RS3 much because I assume he's more into old school, obviously, because that's what he works on. Uh, and Caveman Films was there as well. I believe he was talking about RS3 to, to uh, Mod Slayer. Um, but yeah, I'm just kind of catching up on some old school updates with uh, Mod and Matt. And uh, a lot of interesting uh, stuff are also coming up for uh, old school. So you guys will be loving that, I guess I can say. I believe it's already been told, but like a new skill that they're also working on, uh, which is going to be very interesting the way he explained it to me. Uh, so that'd be kind of sweet to see. So yeah, so I got shown around the office a little bit where I met basically all the J mods and I saw a few things in the workings. Uh, obviously, I did see Elf City in the workings, which looks to be freaking amazing if you guys wanted to know. I, I should probably should have mentioned that at the start of this video, but I, I basically see most of Elf City um, without all the extra add-ons and stuff. But the, 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 I guess you can call it the base of it, the, the, more, the normal structure of it, I guess, the, the build of it uh, is looking very, very good. Um, it's looking promising, and if there's one thing I can tell you guys, which I, without being able to freaking get sued or anything, um, it looks like you won't have to leave that place. You can train a lot of skills there, obviously, which has been mentioned, obviously, from the polls. Um, can't really mention anything else, I guess. I don't want to get sued tomorrow and be like, hey, Alkin, we need $3,000 to hire a lawyer against Jax. That's not cool. There's one thing I want to say, but I can't say it just in case. So um, just look forward look, look forward towards it, and uh, it's going to be awesome. I kind of feel like it's going to destroy the RuneScape map, though. I don't think I'm ever going to leave that place. Like, I'm just going to chill there the entire time. Unless there's like no, I, I don't know if they can train divination in there or not, but I'm assuming sometime in the future more and more shit will be added. Um, but yeah, it's literally just like another RuneScape map on what it looks like. So later on that day, on the first day, we're still there. I'm going to try to skip through my best. Uh, we went to the, the apartments. Uh, I, I believe, I don't know what's RuneCraft still was not there yet, but me and Chris got our rooms. Um, I did a little bit of vlogging then. You guys will see sometime, hopefully tomorrow. Uh, we had, uh, we'll, I think Jane or something like that. Jane and uh, Slayer went out and got some stuff for the, for their apartment, some, some drinks and some pop and stuff like that. Or soda, if you will. Um, and yes, there was beer, I guess I can say that. I believe the drinking age in the UK is 18. And I believe everyone was over the age of 18, I would assume. So, you know, I guess there was, like, no problem with that. I think here in Canada, it's 21, which is kind of weird. Because, like, I never really got into drinking beer. I mean, I have drank beer, obviously. But, I don't know, do you really get in trouble for it? I don't really know. I guess if you're just driving, you know, with having alcohol in you, that's the only bad thing. But I think if you drink beer with your friends and at their house, I don't really think you'll get in trouble, like, ever. But yeah, later on that day, we ordered some pizza. You guys probably saw uh, Raji tweet some pictures for you guys. Um, I Yeah, that's when we were all just sitting down eating. From I think most of the people were there. Uh, Simon and James were not there yet, obviously from Root Shark. Um, I think James uh, was at work, and Simon, I believe, had to do an exam on his last day before he came. Uh, but obviously, they live in the UK, so it's like a few-hour drive, and then they're right there. But that yeah, was basically the first day. We just ate pizza, and we kind of just sat at our house, at our apartment. Uh, me and R2 were up for about 30 hours. That, that like, Ever since we left, we did not fall asleep. Uh, so we finally got to go back to sleep, and I slept for only a few hours, believe it or not. Kind of woke up early. I don't really know why. I took a shower. I took like, a nice bath in this huge-ass tub you guys will see as well in the video, uh, or the real-life vlog type of thing. Um, but they have huge-ass tubs there. Like Literally, like the tub is like a few feet deep, so I could lay down. And, like, my whole body would be around water, which is pretty sweet. I need, I need that shit where I live, man. Now, the second day is whenever is whenever I uh, got to meet James from Moonstriker, obviously. Um, the second the second day, they still did some touring around Jax because most people were not there the first day, or at least the first day that I was there. Um, but for the most part, the second day, I literally just talked to James the entire time uh, when they were doing the tour around Jax's, like, HQ and where everyone kind of works and what they're working on. Because uh, I've already seen it anyways from the first day. I believe James has probably seen most of it from uh, the first trip that he ever had there. Uh, but yeah, we were kind of just in the back of the group just talking the entire time, having a good time. Uh, and then we went uh, we uh, went to eat lunch, I believe. We ate lunch there as well. We ate breakfast and lunch at Jags. They had like, a little cafeteria uh, downstairs where I, I think you do have to pay for it. But obviously for us, we got like these little Jags cards that 
we didn't have to pay, I guess. Although most of the time I never use mine. I, only once they asked to see my Jagex card, but both other times I just, I got free food, I guess. So you're welcome, Jagex. Didn't have to put that on your tab or anything. Although I think most of the stuff is a write-off, I, I would assume. But yeah, I believe later on that night, uh, we went out for dinner at this uh, restaurant. It's kind of a smaller restaurant, but there's really good food there as well. Uh, I believe Raji has tweets on that one as well. Um, just go look up, like, I think it's just Raji RS or something like that on Twitter. You guys will probably see me tagged in a whole bunch of his pictures, as well as Chris. Unexpected pictures where I'm like taking a dump or some shit. It's like, hey, smile. All right, and the first day I also did meet, uh, I met uh, Raji and Sam. I believe they came together on like a train. Um, they actually kind of got me locked out of my own apartment, believe it or not, because uh, I didn't notice that it locks once it closes. I didn't have my key on me because I just got in there literally like five minutes ago. I was just kind of like exploring around. Um, and then they both knocked into my door and I kind of came out and closed my door and started to talk to them. And I tried to go back in and I was locked out and then I had to go over to the next apartment type of thing and just hang out there until they could bring me freaking keys. It took like an hour or some crap. Uh, so yeah, I got locked out the first, the first like hour out there. I'm already locked out of my damn apartment. Typical Alcan move, I swear. So anyways, later on that night we had, we had our dinner. We went back to our apartments and, uh, we kind of just fell asleep once again. And then the third day, I guess, I, I think, I, I feel like I'm missing something. I believe the third day is whenever we, we went bowling. And then the fourth day is when we just had like a few hours there. So I guess the third day, same stuff happened, but, uh, on the second day that night, I, I believe, is whenever uh, Simon showed up, and he he showed up right at dinner time, basically, um, and I shook his hand and stuff like that. I'm like, hey, what's up, man? Um, but yeah, that was like a huge uh, dinner, I guess. We had we had all the people that actually came there, and then we had all a bunch of J-Mods as well there. Um, I don't even want to know what the hell the bill was, but I believe it was like three bills all put into one, because it probably can't hold that many items on like one bill, I guess. So the next morning, I believe uh, James and Simon were already at uh, Mod Slayer's apartment. I guess they kind of drove there earlier because they had their cars. So I'm, I would assume the most of them, they, bo they both probably just drove themselves, you know, wherever we were going. Uh, for the most part, we, all, we always just got taxis for us, which, uh, yeah, I can't go too much in that, I don't think. But it's, yeah, cool. Just in case. I know it's a contract that JX has. Uh, so I'm not going to go into that at all, but it's pretty cool, I guess. So it was that day, I believe, is the day we got to test out Legacy at lunchtime or around lunchtime. We ate breakfast, and I think we just hopped right into there, and we had our dinner. No, we had our lunch in there as well, uh, which is pretty cool. It was a good day. Uh, we got to log on to our like accounts, basically. Uh, that, they, I think they were like pushed back a few days from when we actually played on them, and then we got to test out some Legacy. Um, the, sec the, the last day as well, we got to test out some Legacy, but uh, this is the first day logging on. We tested out a few things. We had a few group discussions, and we talked about you know what needs updating, what you know it's kind of weird, uh, which is pretty interesting as well. We had a lot of good ideas. But yeah, all the ideas were pretty awesome. I, I must say, uh, most of them are very good points. No one you know suggested like, hey, let's bring EOC to, to Legacy. No, no one, no one said something like that. So I'm happy. But yeah, I believe that night we uh, we went bowling around like four or something like that p.m. And I never really looked at the time. I was just going with the flow, and you know whenever we go to our apartments is when we go to our apartments. Uh, and you guys will probably see more pictures on Twitter about me bowling. Uh, I have the granny um, form, I guess, because yeah, uh, you know, I don't like. I'm not that good at bowling with one hand for some reason. But whenever I do the granny, uh, I bowled over a hundred, believe it or not, with the granny form. So that's kind of cool. Uh, a bunch of people were trying to try the granny, and none of them could do it. I was like the only person that could do the granny. If you guys know what the granny is, it's basically when you like you bend. It's like you're doing a squat almost. Uh, and you kind of just bowl the ball with both your hands and just hope for the best. Um, I was actually pretty good at it. I don't really know how. Uh, I remember back in the day when I used to play basketball, and I used to sometimes do granny shots at the three-point line, and I would get them in like all the time. I don't really know why, man. Me and this granny shot, it's just really good. But yeah, I bowled over 100. I, I almost did like the best on our team with the granny, which is pretty freaking awesome. And I bowled like two strikes, I believe, and like a few, um, what do they call it? Not a strike, but like uh so on your second try, you, you get all the pins down. Yeah, that one. I forget what that one is called. But yeah, I got that a few times as well. All right, I'm just realizing I think I messed up the dates. The day we went bowling, we went around noon. And then we went, went, we went out for dinner that night to uh, to eat. So that was kind of messing up the dates. I, I knew I'd mess up the dates somehow. I mean, because I was there a day earlier than most people. So I had to kind of include that day. But yeah, we, we did bowling and then we went out for dinner. Um, which was the second last day we spent there. So the last day that we were there, um, basically the same stuff. We went over Legacy a little bit more. We did a lot of live streaming that night as well. Um, as you guys saw, the, the live streams on the RuneScape channel and also a few of the other people's personal channels. Uh, I streamed with RuneShark. Uh, well, I streamed with James 
uh, like right when we started streaming or the streaming hour, I guess, when we started. Um, I did some DKs with James on Legacy Mode. I believe Archie was doing some PKing or he's getting ready to. Uh, but me and Archie had like a scheduled stream to do on the actual RuneScape channel in their crazy ass RuneScape live stream room, uh, which is really freaking awesome. Man. I, I don't know how much I can tell you guys about it, but they literally have a computer made for just streaming. And I believe what it does, it, it just it's always highlighted on the comments. Like I could read everyone's comments on the stream on this like 20 inch, 20 by like five inch screen, literally just made for reading comments, I think on Twitch. It's not something you'd play on, but it was definitely pretty sweet looking. But yeah, very cool setup in that room they have. Obviously, you know, if they're, you know, moving on to Twitch a lot more, it looks like uh, they're going to have a big setup there. And there's like this big ass camera right in front of me and Archie's face. So it was a little bit weird, especially since I don't really ever stream with my face cam on. Um, so it was kind of a little bit different. And I don't think Archie either streams with face cam. So um, it was kind of weird for both of us. But, you know, we obviously got right into it. That sounded really gay. So yeah, me and uh, him streamed that later on. I think that's the only two streams I did mostly for that entire day. Um, so around like 6 p.m. I was basically already done. I could just do whatever I wanted. Um, and then uh, we had streams going on to like 11 or 12 p.m. for us basically, which is kind of weird to me because that's like, that's like what, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock my time or some crap, maybe 7 o'clock p.m. my time, which seems kind of early, but for them it's so late. But yeah, almost everyone there just kind of did their own thing for their stream. Some of them did it obviously in couples of like two or three. Uh, I believe even some of the J mods were on there as well, like Mod Dean. I think was on there for a little bit. Yeah, Mod Dean's a very cool J mod, by the way. I like that guy. I think he's, uh, I think he's going for a quest cape or some shit on Runescape Three. I think it is. Uh, I remember J uh, Jules was telling me about him a little bit. How he he, he live streams a lot, believe it or not. I believe, um, and he just live streams like questing or some shit. So I found that to be kind of interesting because I freaking hate quest. Actually, I guess I'll take this time now to say. I, I mean. Believe it or not, guys, without any ass like, and I think a lot of the J-Mods were actually very interesting and cool people. Um, you know, obviously, you guys are used to seeing me on the YouTube screen. If you guys saw me in real life, you guys, might, you know, it might be kind of, it makes it a little more personal type of thing. And it makes it kind of more, it's, it's more chill. Like, maybe you hate me right now, but I bet you, you know, if you came and we hang, we hung out for like a day or something, you'd probably like me at the end of the day, believe it or not. But yeah, once you get to know some of the J-Mods on a more personal note, it, it kind of becomes more like friendly almost. But yeah, I would definitely say that a lot of them are very passionate about the game as well, which is pretty interesting to see. Most workplaces you will never see uh, like Jax. Like, I mean, most people there, are all they all have their own personal accounts. Um, some of them might not be too great, but they do actually have a high score, believe it or not. Uh, I'm not too sure how much I'm about to say this to you guys, but they have like a high score for all the J mods um, on their personal accounts, which by the way, there's, there's not a possible chance that they can cheat on their main accounts if you guys wanted to know. I kind of talked about it a little bit with uh, Mod Slayer, like me and Archie. We're like, can't you guys just like instantly give yourselves a drop? They're like, no, you, there's literally no option to do that, uh, which it is true. I, I had the freaking rotten potato in my hand and you can't just spawn stuff. Like you can't make it so the next thing you kill drops a specific item. Um, it's literally just luck based. There's no way you can actually cheat yourself to doing that. Uh, they can't cheat money or experience, obviously, things like that. So they have their own personal accounts they actually play on. Uh, and I, I would assume most of them don't really want to cheat on them anyways because... The whole reason they, they play on it is because it's personal and, uh, you know, they can actually see, you know, they can make their own progress, I guess. Or else besides that, it's just like playing a, a private server. They're going to spawn themselves whatever they want on their JX account, uh, which I would assume, you know, wouldn't really be fun for training on. But yeah, it's pretty cool that they have a high score for um, the actual uh, JMods for the personal account. I believe rank 1 was ranked around 2.3 billion experience and they are maxed out, I believe, as well. Um, I'm friends with a few of them, actually, believe it or not, like around the 1 bill XP mark. Um, I'm not too sure. I think it was top 50 or something like that. I think rank 50 was like a few million experience. I'm not too sure. But um, yeah, some of the JMods do actually have a lot of experience. And I do know the one that's actually rank 1. He used to be a really hardcore player way back in the day. And then I guess he kind of, well, they kind of told me a story about how he got hired and stuff like that. So that's pretty interesting to see. Um, but yeah, moving on from, I guess, that day, which would be, yeah, that night. Hmm. Live streaming. Oh, yeah. I drank some, uh, I think I think it's mostly female beer, basically, I guess you can call it, or female drinks that have alcohol in them, but I think they're called VK or something like that. Um, it, it has, like, a bit of different taste in it. It's not just alcohol. You can taste alcohol in the drink, um, but there was, like, an orange one, like a lime one or something like that, or a mango one, or uh, there was one that was just called blue, I think it was. But you guys can probably Google it and look up VK alcohol drinks or some shit. Uh, believe it or not, I definitely enjoy those drinks. I don't. I think they're called coolers. I think that's what. The, I think. I think that's what they're called. I'm not too sure. 
Um, because I'm not much of a drinker myself, but they are actually very tasty. I, I, from what I heard, most guys don't drink them. It's mostly girls, but hey, fuck that shit. They, they actually taste good. I don't mind the alcohol taste in those ones. Beer just tastes like flat out asshole to me. It sounds so chill when you just say, you know, I'm going to kick it back, have a beer or two, and just watch some football. But for me, it's like, yeah, I'm going to kick back, have some VK drinks, some fucking awesome ass drinks, and then I'm going to watch some football. Fuck that beer shit. But yeah, I'm not too sure exactly how much alcohol beer has. If you guys want to tell me, go ahead. But I know the drinks that I was having had about 4% alcohol in them. And I drank like four or five of them, believe it or not. I thought I was going to get drunk. I was like, oh, crap. I hope I'm not live streaming while I'm drunk. I might screw something up really badly. Uh, but yeah, I guess being a bigger guy it didn't get me too bad. Anyways, that night, I believe, uh, me, uh, Archie, Simon, and James, we all kind of, we were going to go somewhere after all that live streaming, um, and then it was kind of late, obviously, it was like 1 o'clock or 12 o'clock or something like that, so uh, we drove in James' cars, James' car to our apartments, and uh, they both kind of just came over to uh, our apartment, and we kind of just sat down, talked for about maybe 30 or maybe 30 minutes to like an hour, but a bunch of cool and interesting things, by the way, I can't tell you guys, um, but it was, it was definitely a pretty cool talk, it was a... Uh, it kind of reminded me of whenever I chilled my friends and we kind of just uh, hang out for a little bit. It was definitely just like that. Um, but with people that, you know, have been making videos just like me for a long time as well. It's definitely a pretty sweet experience. And later on on the last day, uh, this is the day where me and Chris had to leave around uh, like 12 o'clock or so or 2 o'clock. Uh, I'm not going to tell you guys too much about the trouble we had with the car. The car kind of came early. The car that's going to bring us to the apartments or to the, uh, to the airport. It came early and we weren't even like no one ever told us it's going to come earlier than two. It came at like one o'clock, I believe. Uh, so we kind of missed it. We had to wait for the next one. And uh, we kind of thought we might actually miss our flight or some shit, which would have been really bad. Because um, then we'd have to somehow get in contact with the J-Mods. Like, hey, we're screwed over. Help us. But yeah, for that, for most of that morning, me and uh, Chris, we kind of just went out to, uh, we. I'm not too sure if you call it a park or not. But uh, we went punting, which is, uh, I have a bunch of clips of that. You guys will see sometime, hopefully tomorrow. Look at that. We are in a freaking 30-minute video, aren't we? Uh, yeah, we went punting, as was what they call it. I thought I thought punting was a sport when I first heard that word because, you know, like punting, like for football and things like that, or kind of sounds like golf, too. I don't know. I, I thought it was kind of like a golfy kind of type of sport. Um, but, yeah, basically what punting is is that you go on, like, this little uh, craft type of thing, and you kind of go down, like, the main... The, I'm not sure if it's like a main river or whatever it is, but there's like this little water place that you can like take crafts on, I guess. And you have like a tourist guy on the um, the craft with you and you kind of just float down the river, I guess, with it. And then you go back uh, and it kind of just showed us all these historical buildings. And I think it's mostly just colleges that they showed us, but all these colleges had like a different history behind them. Um, it was pretty sweet. One of the colleges that they actually showed us was a really big college. It was really expensive, it looked like, to build. And I believe what they what he said was that um, there was this big area on the top of the college where you could put this clock. Uh, and apparently the college ran out of money uh, where they literally could not even afford to buy a clock to put on the college. So just this big building with like this big circle round thing right in the middle of it at the top where a clock should be. But they didn't have enough money for the clock. And now basically the university does have enough money for a clock, but for historical reasons, I guess. They're not going to let you buy a clock and put it there because it you know, kind of has like a main point to it. But I found that to be pretty freaking interesting. Uh, but you guys will see later on the tour um, that I have with the real life footage uh, of all the punting that we did. I'm freaking losing my voice, I swear. I don't always sit down and talk for 30 minutes. So I do excuse if I am talking fast or slurring my words. Kind of tends to happen when you talk for a flat out 30 minutes plus. Yeah, so anyways, uh, yeah, me and Chris also got some food that day as well, right at the start, we, I had like steak for breakfast, basically, he had some ham and pancakes, I believe it was, or bacon and pancakes, or something like that, um, which I must say that the steak was pretty good, um, definitely a lot better back where I am right now, though, but it, it was pretty damn good, let alone it was like freaking 15 pounds, which is like 30 freaking dollars for me. That's one thing I'm not really used to, is whenever I see 15 pounds, I think it's like, hey, 15 bucks, that's not too bad. But pounds is literally almost double what our money is. Um, so when something's like 10 pounds, it's like 18 pounds or 18 dollars basically. So for us Americans and Canadians and anything else that's close to our ratio, um, yeah, their money is like 1.8 times. But yeah, so me and Chris got back to the hotel and then we met uh, Sam again and Raji and a friend was also there. I believe it was just those three. The other ones all left. Um, we kind of just went out with our luggage. We're walking down the street with our freaking luggages. 
were like, well, because uh, we got kicked out of the, well, they didn't get kicked out of the apartment, but we had the apartment apparently till like 10 o'clock in the morning and the, the taxis came to pick us up around, uh, I think it was two or one. Um, and there was like, all the J mods were busy that day, I guess. So we kind of just had to like deal with the time that we had. And so we had to leave the apartment uh, just to show some respect, I guess, to the people that are going to go in there and clean it. Um, so we had to kind of walk around with our luggages. It looked kind of awkward. It looked like, looked like freaking travelers, man. Walk around with luggages behind all of us. And we just looked like a bunch of bums. Yeah, we found a nice place. We kind of just sat down and ate there. I didn't eat though, but they all ate, they ate fish and chips, I believe it was. Um, and one interesting thing I'll tell you guys, even though we're so far into the video. Okay, if you guys are this far into the video, by the way, even though we're going to probably end it soon because I'm getting really tired of talking. Um, comment the word um, uh, UK for the win. Yeah, UK for the win. But yeah, this, I, I don't know if I even believe this, but uh, a friend basically told all of us that his plane ticket to go to Jax, basically, or just to go to the UK, costs like relevant to like 30 pounds or 20 pounds. Uh, which I don't know how true that is. That's like freaking 40 to $60 for an airplane ticket. I think this ticket's like two or three hours uh, on the airplane. So, you know, like that's still quite a while. It's not like a, you know, next door or anything. Um, but yeah, he was telling us basically how the fish and chips that he was eating cost as much as his freaking plane ticket costs. <laughs> I found that to be very odd. I don't know if I can even believe that because that is so cheap. Like how the fuck does that even work? How can a plane be paid for for fuel and everyone there and the whole airport and everything with like $30 tickets or $60 tickets, I guess. So that just blows my freaking mind to know that's how cheap it is to travel uh, from Lithuania. I do know it's cheap to live there, but like, that's it? 30 freaking pounds? But anyway, so uh, that was basically the last day where we were just eating there and then we came back to our hotel and we kind of got our taxis, not our hotel, our apartment. We got our taxis arranged. Kind of just say our last goodbyes there to those three, and then me and Chris, we went off into the the, uh, the taxi. Oh, no, actually, a friend came with us, because the taxi that we originally went with, that we were, that he was going to go with, um, actually came and picked us up as well, and we dropped off a friend at the airport, and then we went, uh, me and Chris went to the other airport, um, and then we basically, we were actually lucky enough to get our tickets right behind each other, um, which, which I guess was kind of cool. Because uh, the first one, we were completely different areas. But um, yeah, we got our plane tickets then. We went on. And then like an eight-hour plane ride or so, we arrived back in Canada. Uh, you guys will see probably in Chris Archie's tweets that I uh, I got the random security check. Well, actually, I got checked because I had keys on me for my luggage. Um, and obviously, anything metal, I think, detects. Uh, so they, they had to like search me and shit. And the guy literally puts his hand right around my ass, man. And actually, one of the girls at the uh, the airport was making like a little joke out of it. She's like, oh, you probably meant to get caught so he could touch you. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I really didn't expect her to sit up, but she was really friendly with me, I guess. So, uh, yeah, but obviously a guy was ha having to feel me up and shit. So that was a little bit weird for me. Not used to that type of shit. I, got, I don't know how Abdul enjoys that stuff. But, um, yeah, if you guys want to see that picture, it's on uh, Chris's. It's under one of his tweets I did recently or something like that, I guess. But, um, yeah, that was basically the day. Then I, uh, we arrived in uh, Toronto. I, uh, I met Kelly for a few seconds, and then I went and my uh, my mom and aunt, my mom, no, my mom, my aunt, my sister picked me up basically, and I guess just Kelly picked him up. Uh, but yeah, that was basically the uh, the entire event, I guess you can call it, the trip. Thirty three minutes. This is probably one of my longest videos in a very long time. Yeah, God, I'm so tired of talking. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the story for most of it. Uh, like I said, I did mess up whenever I was talking about the bowling and the dinner part. Those two happened in the same day. Um, but yeah, we didn't go out too much for the most part. Uh, we went bowling out to eat once. And then we mostly just ordered pizza, believe it or not, um, for whenever we were at Jack's or if we were at our hotels or our apartments, whatever. But yeah, before I explode from talking too much, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And um, yeah, hopefully uh, you guys uh, all had fun getting your bonus experience and stealing creations. Oh my goodness, I can't believe I missed that. That is a really crucial week for me to miss. Uh, but obviously well worth it for me. Uh, anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys next video. Uh, like I said, I'll do my best to make it a video uh, with the actual footage with my camera and a bunch of pictures as well that I took. Uh, but if I can't do that, then I'll just be working on a video right now. Uh, I'm working on old school video at the moment. Um, and you guys will probably see that the next day if I can't work on my actual real life footage. So anyways, thanks for watching as always guys. And uh, if you enjoyed, be sure to give it a big dick like. And I will see you guys next time.